In this film we're looking at sharpening and when and when not to do it. Basically um, the first rule of sharpening is don't sharpen unless absolutely necessary. Um, I've chosen a couple of images to actually give you an example of why I need to sharpen and that's because I've got it wrong. I mean so many photographers by default just hit the sharpen button and they kind of over sharpen everything and it just starts to look really really bad. The first point of any sharp sharpening in fact would be the likes of a levels or a curves adjustment and that would be a slight kind of changing of the black point and the white point straight away the increase in contrast alone will make an image look much sharper than it was so if you're looking at the image and thinking you know what it's not quite right it's, it's almost there whatever basically always try and find that first kind of le uh, levels uh, adjustment to see if that kind of works with it first but we don't get it right all of the time and i i kind of hold up my hand with that as well and this is uh, my favorite 50 mil lens but basically it's working at f4 uh, but the depth of field hasn't quite um, hit the eye you think but in fact it's not it's actually a motion blur and this lens doesn't have an image sta stabilizer with it so hence it's uh, not kind of grasped onto the eye as well and things so um, even though it looks pretty sharp when we start to put the sharpen layer on it starts to make that pop and I need to show you how to actually best do it. Before we come back to this image though let's kind of work in its sister image as, as it were and this is where I totally got it wrong but uh, in a different way. So by default um, I'd usually be saying the first way to sharpen an image is going to filter and going into sharpen and basically unsharp mask. This is how I would have initially always explained for you to do it. And then start off with the magic numbers 100, 2, 3. So 100 the amount, 100%, 2, ray, two radius, 3 threshold. And then basically once you've got your 100% in, start to actually back off the, ra uh, the radius um, before you increase any more of the percentage as such really because otherwise you can overdo it but that's the way I would have kind of been explaining to you but really over the past few upgrades of Photoshop the smart sharpen has become a lot more intelligent so that's the way I teach now so pretty much um, going into sharpen going into smart sharp sharpen uh, and this is pretty much the most intelligent way and the easiest way to actually get great results within the likes of Photoshop today. So the first thing is to make sure that you remember that once you've got a particular look and feel to your smart sharpen effect that you like if you have a default look remember that you can actually save a preset in here to apply it when necessary. That's not really what I'm here to teach it's the the key thing is the um, uh, the three main elements the Gaussian blur the lens blur and the mo the motion blur and I chose this image because basically um, if we kind of just hold it on and off the cursor you can see it kind of change on the eye so I've pressed it down now so that's without the um, smart sharpen let go and basically that is showing the Gaussian blur smart sharpen if I show you the lens blur though obviously that is to do with a kind of a slight shake and you can see the difference so the lens blur for this image doesn't have the same effect as the Gaussian blur does in fact um, let's just go back to the op options and click on to motion blur so you would think in fact this is the right one to use um, because of breathing so naturally you would usually kind of get a slightly out of focus with a breath on a slower shutter speed and so on but you can see here that it's not the best one so coming back to the Gaussian blur and it really is the best um, element for this image so once I press uh, OK to that it applies it by default across the whole image of course so the way to work with sharp with sharpening let's, let's uh, control Z that to undo it is to duplicate the layer first so I'm just going to kind of control J to duplicate the layer and then we go back in and filter Sharp, sharpen, smart sharpen. In this case, we're going to choose the Gaussian blur, which is the default one. I'm going to press OK, and then it's going to apply it to the whole image. Well, of course, I only really want to sharpen the little bits of the eyes because they're the ones that are slightly out focus. So this is where we start to bring in the mask. 
and I can just basically press and hold the Alt key while I do that. That gives me a black mask, so nothing is visible of this layer now. And all I need to do now is B for brush, D for default, puts white back on top, and then all I need to do is actually go in there and start to actually paint on or paint through the mask. Uh, obviously, I can change the different opacity layers to change the, the kind of the amount that I want it to look with. And in the same way, just tightening up the lip there a little bit, just bring in some here, opacity back down again. Let's just give a little bit to the beard, just to obviously bring up the highlight on the hair, really. Don't want to do anything to the nose, but of course, what we want to make sure is those hairs on the um, uh, eyebrows are actually solid there as well with it. Let's just kind of paint around the eye a little bit more, bring it a little bit kind of punchy. So if I just kind of come in close for a minute and I just switch, first of all, the whole layer off, you can see how kind of fuzzy it was before. Switch it back on again. And if I just kind of switch the mask on and off, you can see that I haven't really uh, affected all the skin. So I haven't over -sharp, sh uh, sharpened the skin. Um, so that just gives, gives you a good idea on... Uh, how you can use that smart sharp sharpen exactly the same way here let's just delete this one again we'll duplicate the layer this time instead of control J we'll just drag it down to duplicate oh, new, new layer that does it by design and then basically going into the filter sharpen smart sharpen uh, let's just look at the difference now on the uh, is it a Gaussian blur I don't think it is on this one. I think it's a lens blur. That's better. So there is a definite lens blur on this image that makes a big difference with it. So with that in mind, you might want to make an action up or whatever to launch the pre preset of the different um, uh, sharpening effects that you're going to bring in. But remember, the first rule of sharpening is don't sharpen. Do it through contrast first. So in the same way, pick yourself up a uh, mask and then B for brush, D for default, put white on top again, start to actually paint through your um, layer. I just press the zero on the keyboard to reset the opacity of the brush paid, uh, paint in to 100%. So I really want to bring the eye sharp. We'll just reduce that down to 70% then, and we'll just paint in the eye, the eyebrows. Paint just along the eyelashes as well. Just bring a little bit of that beard through through the lip. I think we can go to 90% on the lip. Back to 70% on the hair on here. And then we'll just take a bigger brush, put it on 35% by pressing 3-5 on the keyboard, and then paint on the beard just a little bit. around there and then I'm just going to paint the eyebrows more making sure now I feather off towards the eyes because I've worked so much on those eyes there and that's it so if we come in very very always a good idea to zoom out so you can see it then if we just kind of see the difference in that again you can see the difference of the unsharp compared to the sharp so as I said smart sharpening is definitely the way to go within the modern day Photoshop